G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an RPG-7. This is a standalone, somewhat modifiable rocket launcher, so it's under the heavy weapon category, if you're wondering, with custom sounds and reload animations. Now, why would you want to use this thing? Well, because it's an RPG, for one, and they're pretty iconic, because they're in just about any shooter there is. But also, there's a couple of tactical benefits, like them being lighter and them being able to craft ammo on a chemistry station, if you feel like doing that to keep this thing running. So, if you are doing a Mad Bomber run-through of Fallout 4, definitely pick this one up. This one is available on PC and Xbox as well. We'll be leaving links in the description if that sells you on that already. So, right now, we've got a standard receiver on this and a standard grenade, but you can change the grenades. See? Now, I like how it says grenades, because they're ro rocket-propelled grenades. That's what it means right there. And you can get cluster grenades, which they detonate quickly after firing to affect a large area. Uh, I guess it just splits into multiple missiles. That's kind of cool. A high explosive, which will just increase your damage and blast radius. Nuclear grenade, like a big old fat man. You do a, a ton of damage, 2,600. You don't see that amount of damage from a lot of things in this game. Proximity grenades. They explode when they're close to enemies, and I haven't got this to work just with preliminary testing, so I want to actually see whether that works all too well. We actually get super testing, and a standard one uh, just has armor piercing. That's why it says armor piercing here. If I choose, if I choose any single other one of these, it loses the armor piercing thing. So maybe there's a little bit of cleanup to do on the naming conventions of this, but that's okay. We've also got a red dot sight, but you can have a standard sight. A uh, red dot, some scopes, and an air attack. I'll just give you a run through of those right now because I'm only able to use one thing to use this functionality of the missile switching. Okay, let's take a quick look through the sights. This is the standard RPG. I think it's got the cast iron paint on it or the skin. And when you aim down sights, you sort of twist it to your side like that because you wouldn't be able to get your head all the way over this gigantic timber looking tube thingy. It's probably metal inside it there, but. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I quite like how it's sort of on a tilt there. I think Call of Duty, they make them like that. This is the one with a reflex sight. Uh, it's, I think that's a Basker reflex sight. I've experienced something quite similar on the uh, Chris Vector mod that I use fairly regularly. And note the uh, tactical rails here because the reflex sight and also the Air Tech holographic have one. Funnily enough about this, I believe the Aerotech is an American-made site, and they sort of just chucked a tactical rail there, even though the RPG-7 has a side mounting, which we'll get to in a second, but that's what the reflex, uh, the holographic Aerotech looks like. You'll note that the, uh, the ring actually doesn't form unless you're aiming it down, so, I don't know, get Garrus to do some calibrations here. And if you attach the scope, they actually use that proper side mounting tactical rail thingy to... The best effort, and the scope looks great. Look at that. I think I've got a mod to change the reflections. Actually, it's the same mod that changes the reflections on these uh, sunglasses here. But that looks great, doesn't it? It's not really due to the, the weapon mod itself, but that's what the scope looks like. I don't know if they've made these uh, scopes from scratch or whether they found it in the files, but they definitely don't look familiar to me. And funnily enough, when you use this thing with a recon scope, when you aim down sights, it looks like this, and there's a little bit of movement going on, and you see over to the right there, there's some dials and arrows, and they're always on the move. doesn't matter if you're holding your breath and not moving the scope at all. So, you know, something interesting to look at, a little bit of a high-tech approach to using an RPG-7. Now, I'm going to probably use only one variant of this, but just to show off what exactly you can do, because if you've got more than one of these RPGs, you can't use the rocket switching mechanic to switch over rockets if you have ammo types of uh, multiple, multiple ammo types. So we'll choose probably the uh, reflex sight simply because you get the best things and, you know, using this as a sniper weapon and a scope, although it sounds cool, it's not super practical because you can't really snipe with a rocket, they, they kind of move too slowly, but maybe it's something we think about down the line. You can change the finish here to a bake light. You, you can decrease the weight and make it look super clean. Cast iron, which will increase the weight and melee damage, so I guess if you want to bash things with this, it, they're going to do more damage. But honestly, if you are using this thing, you don't want to be in bashing distance because then you just kill yourself with it, so don't do that. And it got a factory finish, it decreases the weight by a significant amount, 11.1 .1 there. That's possibly the best mod to have here, because look at that. You're down to about half the weight of what you'd get out of a missile launch. And if you remove the red dot sight, you can actually get it to under half. So that's pretty significant. But 
for keeping this uh, reflex side on. I'll gladly take the little bit of weight penalty there. It's got a legendary effect thing if you want it. Honestly, uh, don't use any of these explosive ones, uh, the projectile things, but something like two shot would be unreal, I reckon. But let's just leave that. We probably won't need it because this thing boasting 862 damage just with a standard rocket will probably do a good job. And I guess without further ado, we can start. To get this weapon, you can find it in shops and it's on leveled lists, so raiders and gunners will be carrying it and they'll be carrying ammo too. But if you want to find ammo and use this thing more effectively or use it a little bit more, you can craft the rockets and you can craft a rocket switch if you if you want to switch things on the fly there. I think you get one of these by default, but in case you lose it, that it's an easy way to make caps if you want to sell them, that's for sure. But yeah, you just use that. I guess if you want to sort for... Um, I mean, it's in the aid section, so they'll be easy to find, but that's what you get. You can craft all these. Um, the crafting things are steeper if you're crafting them from scratch, but what you can do is craft standard ones, and then turn the standard one to a proximity nuclear high explosive or cluster, just to reduce the crafting costs a little bit. Okay, so here we are outside of Immersive Gunners Plaza with uh, six rockets to our name. That's okay. The armor mod here is the Corsa Power Suit. It's been around for yonks. I think I checked the release date of the mod and it was released back in 2016. So what I'll do is I'll use one of these fusion cores. You, you, you plug it right in the back there. Do you see it? And that just gives you a ton of extra things because these guys are probably carrying MG42s, which will shred you in basically no time at all. So maybe a little bit of extra damage resistance here will go very nicely. Now, a cool thing about this mod, and it's kind of obvious if you think about it, is that uh, when you fire this thing, the missile asset, you didn't really get to see it there, so we'll have to go again. Uh, we'll find something else to shoot at then. We'll go for a headshot here. If you watch closely, the missile comes in... Alright, just work with me. We'll find something to shoot at. We're going to be spamming crits just to start this off, just to make a statement. There we go. See it? It's got a cool little asset to see that, that's actually firing the the RPG that you load into it. And it includes little uh, fold-out fins that come out after you fire it for stabilization purposes. And that is an MG42 with explosive rounds. So you know what? Everyone gets a crit, including you, mate. So yeah, yeah, you can see the MG42 right on the ground there. And we could attempt to bounce some splash damage, and we can get it in drove. It's, it's pretty easy. It's not super hard to kill people with this thing, especially when you've got a full build meant for uh, using explosives, which is easy when you've got an everything build. We'll just snipe these guys from over here. Maybe a scope would be useful since I'm firing from this far back. But this is the high explosive. I want you to take note of what explosions we're seeing. Stop firing me with that bloody MG. Bad. The explosions are quite big. I got an auto stim effect on that. That's nice. And it creates a little bit of a mushroom cloud too. You might be thinking I've switched over to like the nuclear rocket variant, which I was talking about a little bit earlier. Don't worry, we got rooted. We're taking less damage if we're standing still. Um... But no, this is just the high explosive. It just makes a little mushroom cloud like that. Uh, if we switch over to the nuclear rocket, well, it gets a little bit ridiculous. And you're using a bloody MG, so this is what you get. This is payback for all the Russian commies you killed during the Second World War. Alright, apparently one of us found that funny. Stupid Nazis and their stupid machine guns. Tell you what, they, they did a good job at making a terrifying weapon. Even I'm scared of them, and I'm facing them in video game form. There you go. So, the explosion, evidently much larger when using a missile like this. Also, I like the little thing on the side there. I, I think I saw something like that on the front of a Megadeth album. The warheads will not rust in peace in this case, I'll tell you that much. So, we're kind of just standing here. Um, I think the... It's, are they distracted on blood bug or something? That corpse spazzed out for a moment there. Trying to raise the dead. And you thought that hiding behind your sandbags would save you? Not today. So, we've pretty effortlessly just crushed the gunners out the front here. Which I think is nice. You've hopped over your sandbags. So, yeah. They don't have much faith in those sandbags anymore. 
we'll switch over to the cluster rockets now because I assume these are going to be working a little bit like the uh, the sentry bot rockets, or maybe they just split off in a very small spread pattern. We'll fire these over a distance. Oh, okay. So it's like a Merv thing, except to get a little bit more range out of it. So tactically, it can be useful, but I think it's just easier just to fire at the ground on a straight and easy trajectory. But for cases where they're a little bit over there and not super reachable, and we can't get them with a, a particularly well lobbed shot, we could sort of probe away with this, and we might be able to get one here. They kind of exploded in one shot. Although I've I've got to wonder whether this thing has the same old bugs that the uh, Merv did back in the base game of Fallout 4. Because if you fire it at below a certain angle, it will explode under your feet. And I think we're pretty much finished with these gunners now. Didn't check out the um, proximity one. So maybe we'll have a little bit of fun with that before uh, we say goodbye to the rest of these gunners. So we'll fire it. Oh, all right. Interesting. Um, so if you've ever played Ratchet and Clank 2, think Seeker Gun. So if it, it it'll find something and then immediately lock on when it's close enough. Actually, I wonder how they did that it, with the creation engine. That must have been fairly difficult. But I like how these mods here, although some of them are just flat damage increases, like the high explosive and the nuclear one. All right, here's the kicker. Sometimes it just doesn't work. It's an RPG standoff here. That missile flew right past me. Ooh, big explosions here at uh, Gunners Plaza. Also, you might notice in the top corner there, um, is that going to explode on them? Maybe. We'll see how we go with the sniping. You'll also notice at the uh, top there, yeah, definitely Seeker Gun vibes here. It's good. At the uh, top of the screen there, I've got like a Kill Tips mod, and it's actually compatible with the RPG-7. You'll see a little RPG on the kill feed there. Normally, if the weapon is not compatible with it, it'll just say killed or kill. Phoebe kill XYZ thing that I killed. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. The problem is, though, sometimes it'll just misfire, but when it does work, it feels great. It's good stuff. Let's get a bash kill here. Take that and that. There we go. All right, I think we're finished here. Let's not go inside because that's a suicide. Okay, so I may have been scoffing about using this thing with a scope before, but I think I can see the appeal of using a scope now. There's Swan over there, and what I'm going to try to do is use these proximity rockets and then try to do something. But you might want to reload it. Okay, uh, it doesn't look like the rockets are working, so I'm just firing a, a small bullet at him. At least I'm getting sneak criticals, right? Okay, that kind of didn't work. So maybe we'll go to plan uh, nuke. We'll go the nuclear option. I think that's the way to go. And we've got a 69% chance to hit the head. Note how that's saying, no, bro, you're going to do no damage. Well, that's wrong because... Well, I just sailed right through him. Well, I see how it is. And we might actually get a view of the reloaded in first person here. As you can tell... Um, that does not calculate the explosion effect. That's why it looks like Fat Man do basically nothing. We can probably stop shooting at him now. We're a little bit close. So what we'll do is we'll run. We'll run, damn it. And then we'll stagger. We'll, we'll stagger reset because, you know, staggers are cheaper anyway. And you can just sort of get, it, get out of staggers by changing viewpoints. He's a big boy, so we shouldn't have any trouble missing him. But in terms of... Flat damage output, if you want to take out a gigantic monster like Swan, pack a few of these bad boys and your explosive build. Uh, make sure that's good as well. Take cover behind a tree when he's throwing rocks at you. So this is the delay I was talking about. I'm going to hammer mouse button one so you can hear it. And hopefully that gives you an idea of the delay. It's not exactly ready to fire as soon as you click the thing. you got to wait a little bit longer. A little bit like the harpoon guns in Fallout 76, yet a lot less frustrating. That was just poor aim by me. Let's just go send a mass here. Or not bother aiming at all. We'll just let vats do everything. Actually, I wonder if it'll hit the uh, carriage there. It might, actually. No, it didn't. Let's have a look at the reload in third person. There it is. And again, there it is. 
Nice. I always like reload animations, especially ones that don't suck. But luckily for me, modders always do a pretty good job. We've got a stim pack going there. That wasn't me. That was the course of power suit that did it. I guess they designed this before auto stim was a legendary effect, so they couldn't uh, basically use that. But they managed to make it up before Farber was released, right? Wait, 2016. I don't... I don't remember the timeline. And there's Swan. He hasn't had a good day. He's been cheesed with a rocket launcher. And right as the weather turned bad. So let's move on. Okay, so I've activated a thing called Corsa Night Vision Module. You just chuck all of these on. And there's an accuracy module. That must be due... That must be something to do with VATS. Because it doesn't decrease the spread by looks. Now, I could cheapen the experience. But what I might do here is go for a bit of a cluster rocket. If we can get ourselves into optimal range with this thing, we might be able to get a whole lot of damage very, very quickly. But we have to be... We have to make sure that we're in, basically, this thing's proper, like, super range zone. Oh, it's the, it's the Minutemen. They think I'm a general, but I'm not. So that's good. And they're actually doing a pretty good... Actually, no, they're not. I think what we can do here is possibly just shoot there and just get the whole cluster of things anyway. So depending on what you think, and we can't actually hit him now. They're throwing Molotovs at me now, the bastards. You trade a minute, man. Okay, he's dead now. I was going to wait for him to die so I didn't have to feel bad about shooting a man dead. And... I've got a bunch of turrets just around there. They'll they'll draw the some attention and aggro. Did I kill the Minutemen that were there? No, they're fine. They're level one. What are you doing down here, level one? So it looks like for a quick easy solution, if you're using these uh, cluster rockets, you're in good shape. I wonder if other things take damage if I fire at this at a too low angle. Oh, I died that time. Yeah, these are dangerous. Okay, so here we are outside of Revere Beach Station. We're up on a roof because I jumped and platformed. But what I want to do is I've got a scope on this thing now. And I can see a target from ages away. We've got the uh, proximity rockets loaded in this. So we're going to snipe at him. And we get 60 damage. We'll try to put a bit of distance between the rocket and the target. I don't think it works on these gigantic enemies. So what we'll do instead is we'll... Uh, Equip something like uh, cluster rockets. I won't have the reach. Proximity rockets again. No. Let's just go standard rockets and do a little bit of sniping. Because a target like that, impossible to miss, right? Well, we can get fairly close. The rockets do carry all the way there. We just got to catch him whilst he's standing there. Catch him napping, which he's going to patrol around and hit, sit behind a little bit of a ridge there. So that's going to be hard to hit. But... As you can tell, scope on this thing, although it's cool. Honestly, after everything, unless you can get the proximity missiles to attack on something that is smaller and it actually works, probably can't get a whole lot of work done with them. We'll switch over to high explosives just to speed this up a little bit. Good news is, though, we're still in caution. Even if we were in danger, you'd have no way of getting us anyway. So it's just a leisurely, leisurely sniping run here. There you go, 2084. Bit of hip fire action for you as well. And there's a reload. Very nice. We'll do a look away, no firing, see where that lands. Nowhere bloody close. Almost there. That should be right. Yep, he's mutated now. And we can't see him in vats, but if he does happen to come close enough, we might be in luck. Just gonna shuffle down towards him because I think we've got him on the ropes to be honest so we'll get a couple of bat shots in here we've got a 56 on the shell not super ideal but I'll go for it just to see what happens and we're gonna get screwed over with our vats cost thanks to the scope but it'll be worth the plenty of uh cinematic shots of a rocket propelled grenade flying in look at that oh he's going in like a submarine Will that work out for him? Probably. Don't know how missiles work underwater. Maybe you should have crit that shot. I'm going to activate a crit, so just in case it misses properly. You can see her looking right down the scope in that shot. That was nice. And that was... That's it. 
That's it for that. It was an okay run, but now we've got problems. Big, big problems. We took zero damage from that. That was either unstoppables or just the game cheesing itself. I'm going to shoot over here. How's that sound? Ooh, swing and miss from you. Hey, I'm actually impressed with that pathing. Path You've done a good job there, Mr. Crab, but luckily for me, your pathing path ain't so good. Ah, oh, got a reload. Don't you bloody stagger me out of a reload, you bastard. And I think the course of power suit will keep us alive through this. Normally, three hits and I'm dead, especially after mutation. But today, not so much. And he's we're playing ring around the rosy here. Don't forget to bloody reload. There we go. One rocket ready to go. Looks like one more will possibly do it. And ow, ow. Stop that, you big bastard. All right, cool, we've got him stuck. Any last words, Mr. Crab? Didn't think so. Tell you what, takes a missile to the face like that. He's a tough old bastard. And I'll see you later, mate. And I think that's finished for the RPG. And you've probably been seeing this basically all video. But yeah, the, the, the blast thing... Like, the back blast cap is still there. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but it is what it is. Um, I don't know how you'd fix that. you just remove the little cap there and then uh, just make, like, a hollow black hole in the end of it to make it seem like that it's not completely hollow. Um, they did a cool thing with the back blast in Fallout 76 with the Hellstorm missile launcher. Not so much the case here, but... Um, you know, some things that can be improved upon here. Not much, though. Like, it's a little bit of an aesthetic thing. It doesn't really change anything gameplay-wise. I guess if you're going for a full immersion run, uh, well, you wouldn't want to grab this armor, that's for sure. But maybe that might bother you. But I think I'm going to let it slide. That there was the RPG, and I would highly recommend it. It's good fun. Real good fun. And if you're running an explosives character, get something like a smaller grenade launcher, and you're going to give yourself... Plenty of options throughout the game for blowing stuff up in different flavors. This is an RPG flavor, and it tastes bloody good, I'll tell you that much. Thank you very much for watching, guys.